Hi guys, so lesson six, we're on to lesson six already. So the topic for the worksheet today is the cool down. So I'm going to be talking to you quite a bit about that aspect of our physical activity today, the importance of the cool down, what the different sections are. Um, but first of all, what I want to do is go through the sections we go through each session. So we're going to be doing a warm up. We're going to do our normal fitness section. Skills today is based on striking. So this is going to be an interesting one to do inside. Um, then we're going to uh, look and talk about the cool down and then teach challenge. So warm up, we're going to change it up a little bit today. We'll still do some regular jogging in it, but I was trying to think of some different ways, a little bit more interesting to get that heart rate up. Heart rate raising part, two minutes, as we well know by now. And you're going to do a combination of these things, mixing it up for two minutes. So the first thing you can do, obviously, jogging on the spot. You can do your jumping jacks as normal. But there's a few new activities I want to put in there. OK, one of them is just jumps. OK, so just little jumps off the floor, bending your knees as you land okay so mini jumps another one we can do is jumping side to side so again mini jumps but this time side to side and as we get towards the end of our warm-up we want to make those jumps a little bit higher next activity and this kind of adds to the mobility and also balance is we're going to jump from side to side onto one foot So as I'm jumping side to side, I'm raising the opposite knee. Trying to stay, oh, wobble there already. Trying to stay nice and upright. There. And obviously I can make that a bit quicker as I go along. After I've done that, normal stretching, add a few of those mobilisation activities we did in the last lesson as well. the next section so this is our workout bit this the bit where we're improving our fitness and I want you guys to work really hard what you need today is a timer and also you want a piece of paper and a pen because I think you're going to want to write down the exercises so you can refer to them quickly so you're going to set your timer for two and a half minutes every 30 seconds you need to practice um, sorry, you need to change your activity. So, you will do, first of all, mountain climbers for 30 seconds. So, quick demo of that. Yeah. When the timer gets to 30 seconds, you then switch it for a low plank. <coughs> so, this is our low plank position. Feet comfortably apart, down on your elbows, nice flat back, you shouldn't be dipping or you shouldn't have your bum in the air, nice flat position. So that's your low plank for 30 seconds. I've got a little boy in the way of my clipboard. Next one, frog jumps. So, starting low here, we're jumping up to an upright position. And then we go down again, up and down. We're coming towards here and then we're just going to turn round and go back. Up, 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 turn round and go back. So that one for 30 seconds. Next one, elbow to knee for 30 seconds. So this one here and we want to be jumping it. Keeping my back upright. 30 seconds of that one. And then the final one is 30 seconds of jabs. So we to be on our toes with jabbing straight ahead of us. Okay? 30 seconds of those. Once you've done the, the whole routine, so once the two and a half minutes is up, you're gonna stop, you have a break, you're gonna do it again. See how many times you can do that through.
Good luck. Skills section. So I've got Toby who's going to help me out with this bit. We have got a cricket bat, just because he got one when he did this cricket scheme. We've got a tennis ball um, and we've also got a ruler. So whatever you can get your hands on. If you've got a plank of wood that you could use, great. If you've got um, a cricket bat, <laughs> absolutely awesome. But it, you don't have to, okay? You can use whatever you, you've got. What we're going to do first of all is we're going to focus on striking but out of the hand. So when we're talking about striking activities, we're talking about things like cricket, rounders, where you are trying to strike the ball, so hit the ball, so it goes away from the opposition. And while that ball's away, you're trying to score as many runs as you can. Striking is a specific thing of hitting that ball. All right, so that's the skill we're working on today. So we're just going to build it up how we would. You come up with your own activities. Uh, there is space on the worksheet today for you to give me your ideas. So Toby's going to just stand away from me here. All right, and the first activity he's going to do is he's going to hit the ball out of his hand. So he is hitting, just wait a moment, he is hitting towards the sofa. All right, so he's not hitting towards mummy's fine china or anything he's just hitting towards the sofa so quite simply for the first one he's just hitting the ball out of his hands and he's going to practice that a few times brilliant okay so that's quite easy for him so the next thing he's going to do is he's going to drop on the ball on the floor and then he's going to strike it Try not to hit the phone. Lovely. Okay. So, again, that's quite simple for him. So now I'm going to feed the ball because this makes it more difficult. And in a game of cricket or rounders, that person who's bowling isn't going to just give you a nice ball so that you can hit it nicely and cleanly. All right. They're going to make it a bit harder for you. So I'm going to bounce it for him now and he's going to have to adjust. It's nice and gently because we are inside. If you've got a bit more space, what you can do is start varying where the feed goes to him. So he's having to adjust his footwork and change his footwork in order to hit it. Next thing I'm going to do, the ball's going to have zero bounce and he's just going to hit it on the volley. Okay, let's make it trickier again. So this time he's going to use a ruler. This is going to make it more of a challenge for him. He's going to hit the ball straight out of his hand. Oh, good one. Oh, quickly get it. Brilliant. Now he's going to give himself a bounce and hit it. Oh, <laughs> so we won't expect it to go quite so far. And again. So this one is a lot harder because the, the actual, you know, bat is much smaller. Right, let's see if you can do this one. So I'm going to bounce the ball. He's going to try and hit it. Good boy. Okay, so he had to adjust his feet slightly in order to get in a good position to hit it. Yeah, good man. Right, let's see if you can do this one. Oh, I'm not expecting he will. It's quite tricky. Oh, come on, Tobes. Come on. Good man. Brilliant. Okay. So try those activities and write down any that you come up with. I'm just going to talk to you for a few minutes about the cool down. So the cool down is the focus of the worksheet today. And there's a few questions on there that you will need to answer. And I'm going to try and give you the answers pretty much now. So why do we cool down? Why is it important? And what is involved in a uh, cool down? It's something we're not very good at doing at school. However, if you are going on to do more intense exercise, a cool down is really important um, for so many different factors. If you are going to classes outside of school, if you're going for coaching sessions outside of school, I would expect that your coaches, instructors are getting you to do a substantial cool down. 
A cool down would involve some kind of um, heart rate reducing activity. So you might start off by doing a jog and then gently bringing that down to a walk. You might um, do some activities that you've been doing in the session, but just at a slower pace. And then the next element you have to include in a cool down is a stretch. OK, so this has helping you to improve your flexibility when your muscles are still warm. What a cool down isn't for is reducing injury. OK, it won't stop injury. However, if we're doing it effectively, it will stop us feeling less sore in the morning. OK, so. What's the point of it? First part is removal of lactic acid. So when we're doing exercise, this um, chemical called lactic acid builds up in our muscles. If we suddenly stop doing activity, okay, and our heart rate reduces, the blood stops pumping so fast uh, around our body, the, the likelihood is that lactic acid is just going to be left in, in my muscles. If the lactic acid stays in those muscles, then I'm going to feel incredibly sore um, the next day. In order to get that lactic acid, keeping moving and getting it out of my muscles as much as possible, I need to continue to do some low intensity exercise, which then will clear that lactic acid out. By also doing a cool down, we get rid of any waste and carbon dioxide that's kicking around our body, which won't do us any good. So we need to get rid of that as well. We bring our heart rate and breathing slowly back to normal. OK, so we can feel a comfortable level again. That's really important. We need to do it gradually because if we don't, then what can happen is blood can pull in our lower limbs, so in our legs, and it can make us feel quite dizzy. So we need to keep that blood moving at a reasonable rate and gradually bring it back to normal in order to vo avoid that feeling of dizziness. I've certainly done that before, suddenly stopped an activity and felt completely dizzy. Uh, and what's happening there is because the blood is kind of settling in those lower limbs, in, in your legs that you've just been using to do your run, um, that your, your head is actually being almost starved of oxygen. So when you finish your athletics events, that's why you've always got one of us teachers getting on at you saying, stand up, stand up, keep work, walking around, get your hands on your heads, because you want to keep that oxygen coming into your body and you want to keep it circulating nicely. So you're not getting that dizziness. Uh, last thing, and I've mentioned it already, is improving your flexibility. This is a perfect time to stretch because your, your muscles will be nice and pliable. OK, um, if you think of it, then being really warm and easy to stretch. Right. There you go. That's cool, Dan. Complete the worksheet and have a go at whose challenge is it today? I've forgotten. Miss Washington's challenge. So have a go at that. See you later. Hi, guys. Hope you're all OK. I've got another PE challenge for you today. So we're going to see how many walking planks we can do in 45 seconds. So you're going to start in the plank position and then you're going to step up to press up position and then back down and that counts as one. Okay, right, let's go. 45 seconds. One, two, three, Four, five, six, 19, 20, 21, 22, there we go, so have a go.